Um, my name is Olaf Gräser, I'm from uh, Phoenix Contact and I'd like to talk about a project called Smart Engineering and Production 4.0 with Automation ML inside. And um, it's in cooperation between Phoenix <laughs> and um, the company Eplan and Rital. And uh, maybe the story behind this, this project started for me uh, at the last last year Hanover Fair, not this year, last year. And we had um, from the machine building department from Phoenix an uh, industry 4.0 demonstrator and uh, this machine was done hardly at the deadline, means super hard at the deadline. When the fair started, the machine was running, everyone was happy, except my boss. He came maybe two, three hours later and told me, mm, I talked to Rital and Eplan and next year everything must be a little bit bigger. And it should include uh, topics like continuous uh, engineering from the product to the production. And uh, so we had a deadline for one year to make one um, fair stand. And this is the, the result, maybe. No? Yeah, that's the stand we had this year. And the uh, topic was continuous engineering. We, s um, we wanted to show how, we, uh, how do we engineer an, um, our products at Phoenix Contact, which uh, for example are terminal blocks, like you can see on the monitor, and our power supplies or anything, small components that can be used in a switch cabinet. And topic also um, was the engineering. So taking these small components, putting it into a uh, cabinet, switch cabinet, a virtual switch cabinet with uh, ePlan, for example, and finally use the result, which is an automation ML file, for the production line. So the complete line continues from component engineering over product engineering into the production. And uh, just so a short summary of the fair. We had uh, 300 uh, visitors, that's not so much, the first uh, view, but we had also 69 guided tours in five days, which means more than 1,300 visitors. And we had uh, politicians like Stefan Weil or, or <laughs> um, Professor Johanna Wanka. Okay, challenge number one for us was um, we, as a um, component manufacturer, have uh, to support the engineering tools with digital descriptions of our products. And since there are several engineering tools in the world, not only ePlan, but also a few other, um, every engineering tool has its own data format, and we have to provi provide every data format, and it's, uh, this is difficult. So the idea was um, um, to recommend just one version and this was for us not automation ml but e class e class is um, was intended for data, data exchange in uh, catalogs or catalog data exchange of uh, components and here's an example just uh, a little of it and you have classifications groups 27 is for electrical parts uh, subgroup 14 is for electric installation device and you can go on until you reach a typical uh, Phoenix contact product, the feed through terminal block. And um, if you take this for example, then you get a list of attributes which describe this article. This is just a little bit of it. You have um, a description of color, how much connection points or what kind of uh, connection is it. Is it push-in or is it uh, with screws or where's the position and the direction, how to put the uh, wire inside and everything we need for engineering and we need for production. So coming to the engineering, um, we as the component manufacturer have to deliver the digital data or models of our components, fine. We can do this by a cloud service or maybe a web shop. And the engineering tools now import these components and if we do that, we have one big advantage, um, we have common semantics. Every engine engineering tool has the same understanding of the components, um, so uh, it's clear what the terminal block is, or a power supply, because they have the same attributes. Um, 
This is the result of the engineering. Maybe it's, um, let's call it a virtual prototype. It's a combination of the single components into one bigger product, the yeah, switch cabinet. And uh, this is the second challenge in this project. How can we describe one virtual prototype so that it can be used by different engineering tools? And we can do this by automation ML. Um, not automation ML alone, but in combination with E class. Uh, the idea of the combination is um, the role class libraries in automation ML are not that strong at the moment, from my point of view. So we take E class XML, translate it directly into an automation ML role class library. That's easy. And uh, well, after that, we have an automation ML description with E class role class library. And the strength of automation ML is that we can describe relations, meaning a plug is on a terminal and um, the terminal is on a Dean rail and the Dean rail is inside the switch cabinet. This can be done with automation ML. And the definition of semantics, what is a terminal block, what kind of devices at all do we have, and what are their typical co um, attributes that can be described with E class. So, means we have several engineering tools and they are working on just one data format below. And they can read and write in this one file and there are parts of intersection, but that's okay. Let's imagine the first tool is an engineering planning tool and you have um, connection plans in the electric scheme which says this is, here should be a terminal block one day, but I don't know which one exactly. After that, engineering tool number two loads this file, sees, oh, there's a position where the terminal block is not defined, defines it maybe, and this is a part of the intersection, and writes it back. So the file stays consistent. Everything is fine, and um, tool three and four can load and work on this file and overwrite earlier results, if necessary. Okay, and here finally, just one example we used uh, at this fair. It's a ClipX machine. It's a typical machine for industry 4.0 demonstrations. It can build these terminal blocks, mount uh, terminals on a rail, it can do the marking, uh, can set bridges, and so on. And as it is in this 4.0 thing, we have an intelligent product, means the product knows what it is by itself. So the, here we have an RFID tag, a little small one. Um, okay, the memory is not big enough to hold the complete automation ML description. That will not work, but we can have a uh, reference inside uh, showing where the automation ML description of this product is. And the, yeah, the idea now is the manufacturing execution system reads this automation ML file and um, understands by the E class part, okay, there's a part uh, classified as um, 2740. Uh, 6.2, it's a Dean rail, and we have another E class 27, 14, 11, 20 feed through terminal block or several of them. And the automation ML part then describes uh, these feed through terminal blocks are mounted on a Dean rail. So the relation description. And the execution system can now um, conclude that we need a machine which can do the mounting on the rail. And this machine has such a mounting device and can do it. And the same story holds true for the second and third part, where we, second part is where we do the um, writing or marking of the terminals. And finally, we have this camera control system here. And the, the model, the check model is also created based on the automation ML file. What are the next steps in this project? Um, first of all, there is this platform industry 4.0 and we try to place automation ML in combination with E-Class as the standard uh, data format for industry 4.0, especially for the um, description of products or the self-description. And for the next fair, we try to model not only the terminal blocks as we did in the last fair, but the complete switch cabinet. And that's it for this project. <laughs>